while New York's flying finest use helicopters to fight crime. In another part of the world, another crew readies a very different helicopter to taxi passengers across rough, open seas. It's several hours before his passengers will even show up, but Bob Garnum is already on duty at the Halifax airport. A pilot for CHC, the Canadian helicopter company, Garnum is conducting a pre-flight safety check. Before every flight, he goes over every centimeter of this big, broad-beamed Sikorsky SK-61 amphibious helicopter. Check, double check, check again. He has to be sure it's in perfect flying order. With co-pilot Ron Legasic, Garnum taxis workers to and from oil rigs off Canada's often turbulent east coast. This aircraft's four flotation devices, its long fuel range, and its 18-passenger payload make it the vehicle of choice to fulfill CHC's mandate. Every day, Canadian helicopter transports personnel back and forth between oil rigs and Nova Scotian terra firma. As far as the company is concerned, it offers more than just a taxi service excels safety. Safety procedures are strict and attention to detail is rigorous because out on the open seas anything can happen. Buried under the cold gray depths of the North Atlantic is a wealth of natural resources. Energy corporations are increasingly eager to dig into the ocean floor in search of oil, natural gas and profits. But it's a dangerous environment. Only the most highly specialized and superbly trained personnel work on these offshore platforms. Getting them there requires highly specialized personnel and equipment too. It's uh, designed for offshore working over water. As you can see it has a boat hull so it can safely land on water in certain sea states. Once he's completed his inspection, Garnum will check weather and air traffic reports to prepare his flight plan. Good morning, ExxonMobil. It's uh, Bob at CHC. Just want to confirm you received our flight plan and the itinerary for Sierra Alpha Bravo. Just wanted to check on the, any other significant weather and uh, if you have any military traffic traveling in the corridor today. The oil company has supplied the coordinates for the drop-off. It's up to the pilot to deliver the company's personnel to that spot. Out on this ocean, weather can change in the time it takes to say, death by drowning. So there always has to be a what-if plan. So there can be a lot of weather between here and there that we don't know about. So that if we were to get offshore and for whatever reason the weather went down or the platform maybe had an emergency alarm where they wouldn't allow us to land, then we have to go somewhere else. And somewhere that you can safely go to if your original plan doesn't work out. So we always have one of those in our back pocket. As the CHC choppers are moved out onto the tarmac and readied for takeoff, passengers begin to arrive. The Sikorsky can carry up to 18 passengers. For most flights, there are fewer. Whatever the number, it's the co-pilot's task to brief them on safety. A video describes safety procedures. Most of the passengers are familiar with them. Oil rigs don't receive that many new visitors. But the tape is a reminder that in case of emergency, their full cooperation is needed and expected. The co-pilot reminds them that anything can happen over rough seas. And underlining the danger, every passenger is handed a bright fluorescent dry suit that must be worn. If a passenger, perish the thought, should end up in frigid waters, the dry suit could very well save his or her life. Uh, the only thing that would prevent us would be weather considerations here. In the winter time, we're, uh, we're limited by icing conditions. Summertime, we're limited by thunderstorms and, um, and thick fog in the offshore. The big Sikorsky is maneuvered away from the airport and toward open sea. It's not a long flight to the oil rig, but that doesn't make it any less dangerous. And 
whereas takeoff at Halifax is usually routine, landing on the rig is often anything but routine. Well, landing on a platform provides its own uh, challenges for uh, several reasons. It's very small. It's uh, 75 feet by 75 feet. This aircraft, from the tip of the rotor system to the tip of the tail rotor blades, is 75 feet long. Lining the aircraft up, you know, that does take some expertise. It can be especially tough in windy conditions or at night. A dark night in foggy conditions where you're landing with your minimum visibility. It's like uh, looking at uh, a, a spacecraft in space, you know. All you see is lights. You don't see anything above, you don't see anything below, so. Between the two of them, Bob and Ron have about 40 years of flying experience. What that experience has taught them is to always expect the unexpected, to never assume anything, and to ensure a safe ride at all times. Well, I don't consider it dangerous at all. I mean, there's, uh, in fact, in this type of operation, it's probably one of the most uh, safe type of helicopter operations that you can find because it's so regulated. Everyone is so safety conscious. The oil companies, the helicopter companies ourselves. Uh, this is our business. We're in business and we have to sell safety. If security is the company's first motivation, for pilots, there may be other motivations. Oh, every day is a different challenge. Every day is uh, something new. And of course, when you're up, uh, you know, when you have this beautiful view around you and you get up on top of the clouds on a day when it's foggy down below and it's just beautiful blue sky up on top. And to me, it's been never a dull moment.